Hey there, it's Pete with GCI Turf. Hope you're having a great day today. I want to welcome you out here to my Kentucky bluegrass test area, uh, where for about three years now, I've kind of been playing around with different uh, varieties of Kentucky bluegrass in preparing for my renovation back here and where I'm going to switch over my turf type tall fescue back here in the back over to a full-blown Kentucky bluegrass yard. So I just wanted to take a minute and share with you my experience, what I think about Kentucky bluegrass. So if you've been following me for any length of time, some of you have been following me since day one and I appreciate that. If you're not, subscribe to the channel. That's what we do, lawn care. And I kind of help show you, you know, how to grow it, mow it, care for it, the whole nine yards. Now, where did this journey start okay I, I have to give credit where credit's due about three years ago when i started putting videos on youtube and you know kind of started that whole journey you know things will pop up on your feed and, and i can't remember what video it was but i, I clicked on it because i saw this gorgeous piece of turf his name's connor ward and at that time and i still think the same way it hands down one of the single most prettiest yards, uh, most gorgeous stands of turf I've ever seen. And to be honest with you, I was intrigued. And so I started watching the man's channel and come to find out it's Kentucky bluegrass. And I was watching him as he, you know, cut it real short and cut it low to the ground. And, you know, me being a tall fescue guy my entire career, this was kind of new territory for me cutting a cool season turf that low and the more I watched the more interested I got and I hit up my buddy Chris he lives in the mountains of North Carolina he's an exceptional grower of Kentucky bluegrass you know he has a lawn care company and he, he kind of does what I do but he's in a much different location environment and you know it's kind of typical for them to have bluegrass up that way so I start picking his brain and say hey can I have Kentucky bluegrass where I live and the reason I say that for my entire lawn care career I've always heard that hey Kentucky bluegrass can't handle you know those really hot temperatures and that kind of thing and and we live in a place in North Carolina in the Piedmont Triad where our summers can get incredibly hot and, and really dry. And so with that said, I never really even considered bluegrass as an option until I talked with my buddy Chris. And you know, he was a big encouragement to me. And he was saying, hey, you can do this, you can do that. And we just kind of went back and forth, you know, lawn care talk and that kind of thing. And I finally said, okay, I'm gonna plant some, I'm gonna try it and see what happens. Now y'all remember, my first little test area was that 1,500 square foot right on the back side of that building right there. And I come out and I prepped the ground and got it nice and graded and smoothed out and planted four different individual varieties of Kentucky bluegrass. So I started feeding it and watering it and growing it and mowing it and caring for it and loving on it. And the more I got into it, the more I was like, hmm, this ain't too bad. And of course, at first I was a little bit overprotective, right? You gotta remember I'd heard all these horror stories about people trying to grow Kentucky bluegrass in our area and it just not working because of the heat. So naturally, I was real protective and kind of felt like I overdid things uh, to a certain extent, watering being the main example. And what was it, about a season maybe two seasons we kept that back there i can't remember exactly i think it was two years we kept that back there and you know the, the more i put into it the more i seemed to get out of it and the more i was learning about it and that's kind of when i put my first uh kentucky bluegrass blend together and called it blue heat uh simply because it's bluegrass and it stood up to the heat real well but i wanted more okay i wanted to uh, dive into it a little bit deeper so that's why I killed off this area right here and planted all these different uh, individual varieties of bluegrass and, and mixed them and blended them in different ways and then planted them. So if you watched that video, you remember uh, right here is number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. 
So this is the blue heat. Moving forward, this is what's gonna be in it. All the information's on the website. If you wanna check it out about the varieties, but there are three uh, very, very proven varieties that are incredibly dark green. You can see the color of this turf is super dark. So what I've learned about Kentucky blue is it can be a little bit tricky or a little bit hateful to get started. Of course, you need some patience with this turf type, getting it going. You've kind of heard that whole sprout and pout type thing. And that's kind of true to a certain extent. Uh, this actual mix right here, uh, to the best of my knowledge, last year come up in about seven days, roughly. And it kind of likes to stall out and kind of slow down a little bit, but then it picks right back up. And once it picks up, it grows in pretty dang fast. Obviously, as long as you have the water to support that and the correct nutrients in the ground. I think one of my favorite things about it is it has a very fine textured leaf blade. I found that when you feed it correctly and you mow it in the correct frequency, meaning uh, if you're going to cut it short, if you mow it more often, uh, if you're going to cut it taller, of course, you don't have to mow it quite as often. But if you do those things, this grass will thicken like crazy. It is incredibly dense and thick. I've mowed this at all different kind of heights. You know, at the shop, I had that little bit of bluegrass mixed in with the Bermuda. And while the Bermuda was dormant, it was complete bluegrass. And I had it down to sub half an inch. And it looked really good at that height of cut. Out here on this test plot, I've been cutting it with a rotary mower, and that allowed me to experiment with a couple of different uh, mowing heights using a rotor rotary type mower. And so I tried it out at two and a half inches and then tried it out at an inch. And honestly, I see little to no difference in the way the grass performs at either of those cutting heights. So mowing it has been an absolute pleasure, to say the least. I absolutely love mowing this shortcut grass uh, it's it's like a whole new world for me you have to remember for years i have been the cut it four four and a half inch tall fescue guy and so for me to have the opportunity to mow a turf a cool season turf at a low height of cut that that's just it's new for me and it's exciting and that's why i get so worked up about it so what about fertilizer uh, basically, I fed it really no different than my yard. Maybe slightly different here and there, maybe a little bit more spoon feeding type applications, meaning uh, liquid apps more frequently with lower doses versus some of the heavy granular fertilizers you'll see me apply. But with that said, I have hit this hard two or three times this year with the protein. I put the 2005 on it, I put the 12024 on it, and I put the 600 on it, full blown rates, and it responded like an absolute champion. So yeah, I might could tweak it a little bit and might feed the bluegrass slightly different than I do the tall fescue, but at the end of the day, you could feed them both the same and get the exact same result. For the most part, the same herbicides that I use on my turf type tall fescue, I use them on the Kentucky bluegrass. For the most part, when you read the label on a jug of herbicide that's designed for a cool season turf, you'll see turf type tall fescue and then right up under it will be Kentucky bluegrass on the majority of them. The rates in which you apply might vary just a little bit here and there, but other than that, there's not much difference. So the big question, I'm sure a bunch of you been waiting on this, water. How much more water does it take? Well, like I said earlier, back there behind the shed, I was very protective and overly cautious and watered it considerably more than I watered my fescue. But this year, I relaxed a little bit because I wanted to push it to the limit and see just what I could get away with. I can't go back and tell you every single individual minute that the zone ran, but as a general idea, I ran the irrigation here on this bluegrass absolutely no different than I do on my fescue. 
in my yard. I think the single most impressive thing about this bluegrass is I have not put one drop of fungicide on it. Not the first single drop of a fungicide this year. And there is zero presence of any disease. I have not seen anything remotely close to disease. And we have had the perfect weather lately for disease pressure to be super high. So for me growing turf type tall fescue for so many years and knowing that uh, tall fescue is very prone to brown patch and can get some uh, leaf spot and can you know even deal with pythium and that kind of thing, that is extremely impressive to me that I have seen zero disease in this turf and I think that's simply amazing just to be honest with you. So what you're looking at right here is the GCI Turf Blue Heat and you know do I recommend it to anybody? Absolutely not. I don't. Again it's a cool season turf. It's going to do the best in cooler climates. Do I recommend this to folks that live in a climate like mine like in the transition zone? I weather from June up until 1st of September can be anywhere from 80 to 100 degrees. Super high humidity, especially in July and August. You see me out here in the video sweating like a dog. So I had to think about this real hard because I know that you know folks listen to me and they take my recommendations and all that kind of thing. And I guess wh what I'm trying to say with my recommendation is you just have to look and see for yourself. You've watched me do pretty much all the videos out here. You've seen me grow it, you've seen me mow it, you've seen me water it. I've went into full detail in this video to try and tell you every single last thing that I know and have learned about Kentucky Blue. So with that said, you know, I think it's, you have to make your own mind up on that. You have to be the one to make the decision, hey, I've seen Pete do what he does out here. Do you wanna put that type of effort into your yard? And if you do, I don't see any reason why you couldn't have Kentucky bluegrass. And again, I want to stress this very hard, very, very hard. Irrigation is a must, period. If you live in a transition zone area, yes, fall, winter, spring, it's going to do great. It's going to look good. But summertime, it's not going to handle the heat unless you have consistent water that you can put on it and you can repeat that over and over week after week throughout the entire summer. The last thing I want you to do is say, hey, Pete said I can have Kentucky bluegrass and you plant it and then the following summer it's toast. I don't want that. No, 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 I don't want that. But I do want you to know that it's possible because I have literally showed you through multiple videos uh, you know what you can do with Kentucky bluegrass. So again these are my thoughts and my opinions. I don't grab them out of the air and don't get them from anybody else. I actually physically get out here and do the work and do my own testing on things and see my own results and then I give you my own feedback based on what I've done. So with that said I hope this has been informative I hope maybe, you know, you learned something about Kentucky bluegrass you didn't know. So as always, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch, and I'll check you later.